not the same lock. Somebody replaced it. Before they become its next victim. <laughs> talking about the movie Shrieker. This is a 1998 Full Moon production, obviously produced by Charles Band in that case, that stars Tanya Dempsey and Jenya Lano. Now this was directed by David Dakota, who directed such classic movies as Making It Huge. Yes, he really directed that, among with a bunch of other ones. He's a prolific B-movie producer, but also produced some uh, more adult content, shall we call it. So, this one is also known as Shriek here in the UK. Now, so this was a late 90s movie, so this kind of came on the back of the Scream movie. So, I think here in the UK, and I think a lot of places in Europe as well, it was shortened to Shriek, which kind of sounds a little bit like Scream, to capitalise on the popularity of that movie. Although this is really a creature feature. Now the story itself takes its cues from a whodunit mystery and also Night of the Demon, which is also known as Curse of the Demon. The story, we have an abandoned hospital and we have six initial students that are kind of squatting there. And we have a seventh student going to turn up a little bit later on. And they're squatting there because they are trying to cut their costs. And there is this legend, this, this kind of historic darkness that is in this particular abandoned hospital where there was these killings 40 years or so rather uh, before this. Now it appears that there is some type of demonic entity called the Shrieker that can be summoned and controlled by someone if there is five sacrifices. Now how you get sacrifices you are essentially given a demonic sigil on a bit of paper very much like you know Night of the Demon. Now the movie plays kind of like a who done it, who is the antagonist, who is the person behind this. It is one of the seven group of these uh, students. Which one it will it be? Lots of red herrings. You have to watch the movie to find out. Anyway, so what do we think about Shriek, aka Shrieker? A very very quick production from Full Moon. Um, I, I believe this was shot in, in around about a week, so it kind of shows. There are some uh, some things that I think I enjoy, but the, the, the things that I think work in this movie are ultimately the stuff that is taken from other properties. The the idea of a whodunit is nothing new, but I actually got to say, I think the movie actually handles that portion of it quite well, because you don't really know who who does it, to be fair. I think it's actually, the mystery is, is um, relatively intriguing in a kind of low-budget B-movie way. We get a few kind of red herrings, we get a few possibilities as if it might be, who it can't be. And, I, and there's actually a little bit of a twist in regards to that. I actually think that part of the, of the story was actually handled quite well. And again, the whole the whole conceit of having been given a sigil, and this ultimately marks you for death, obviously a concept taken directly from Night the Demon, but nonetheless, it's still a, it's still a kind of an intriguing um, proposition ultimately. And if you can just imagine, if you were to find one of these kind of sigils, you think, "Oh my God!" You know, and, and it, it's kind of scary stuff. I gotta say, I think the actual makeup of the Shrieker itself, the actual monster, I quite liked it. You know, it's kind of got this cool design where it has two heads with sort of like little head kind of poking out of its side. No real reason for that. I mean, the design choice is just a kind of like a grotesque monster. And it doesn't really serve any purpose why it has sort of two heads and, and this sort of thing. And they, they don't really seem to kind of act independently or anything like that. So it just seems like it's kind of like this, this monster design they kind of had laying around. But nonetheless, I kind of quite liked it. What doesn't work, ultimately the actual creature itself, I think, is the main problem here. Because it, it really doesn't do anything. I mean, it kind of looks cool, but as I've said, the... The design of it is never really explained. We don't, you don't really know why it's got two heads. Do they think independently? What is the purpose of it? It just, it, it just is, you know. There's no real reason. The actual shrieking part of it as well. Yeah, a monster kind of makes growling sounds. It, 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 it's nothing really kind of particularly um, plot-wise in regards to that. Yeah, the kind of the monster makes some noises. Pretty much all monsters make noises, but there you go. Uh, it has this kind of ability to kind of teleport as well, which was interesting, but that would have been a more unique selling point of it rather than it's kind of the noises it makes, which doesn't really have any purpose ultimately than just noises. 
But there you go. The monster also is relatively ineffective, I have to say. Its ultimate downfall is unbelievably easy. And you think, surely this is, can't be, surely there's got to be some other kind of like scene where we see it kind of rise up again. Nope, it is defeated in one of the most easy fashions you've ever seen. Uh, the movie is just has this kind of cheap 90s Dawson's Creek sort of style sheen to it where everyone's kind of running around with their, their abs out and stuff like this. Obviously, uh, as I've mentioned, David Dakota's kind of background was in, in sort of like, you know, uh, adult entertainment and a kind of, uh, um, you know, specific kind of version of that. So it kind of is very much influenced by that as a lot of his work uh, tends to be, to be honest with you. Some of the acting here is is a little on the hokey side, I won't lie. It's kind of, it's not surprising to be fair, if the movie was apparently shot in six days, it really doesn't kind of uh, come as any surprise that the acting seems sometimes a little bit kind of unrehearsed and uh, and, uh, and kind of things like that. There's also some, some issues here. There's, there's this massive hospital building with which has been abandoned for apparently decades, still has, you know, running water and electricity and things like that. And we get a line about how there's, one of the kind of the students is an engineer and things like this. But you can't believe that there wouldn't be, you know, uh, vagrants and whatnot in this kind of facility at the same time as well. It's all kind of seems very generic. The actual kills aren't particularly kind of interesting. It's not particularly kind of gory. It's never really a spooky film. Uh, and ultimately, I think its best ideas are those ones, those ideas that have been taken from other properties. So over and all, I think it's it's just... It's pretty much serviceable, I suppose, but never really particularly exciting, and it, it's pretty forgettable. And I, th I just think the um, some of the aspects here were a little bit of a waste. And it's kind of one of these somewhat forgotten full move movies that only ever had uh, one movie. Though they have made a little bit of kind of merchandise from it here and there, as Full Moon loves to do. Ultimately, I'll give it a 4 out of 10. It has a personal connection to me because I, I do like Jenny Lano. She's one of my favourite kind of like celebrity crushes. But nonetheless, I won't let that affect my, uh, my judgement too much. It's a 4 out of 10 for me. Have you seen Shriek, a.k.a. Shrieker? If you have, leave me a comment and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.